Tatami TV with Jake Kellenberger, Back to Rio. First of all, Jake, what brings you back to Brazil? Um, you know, just I had some good friends. I, I went to Sao Paulo for a, a seminar with a good friend of mine, Chris Wilson. Um, he opened a gym in Hebron Preto, so I uh, went there for about a week and a half and, and uh, did a seminar there. And we, had a, we had a really good turnout. Um, you know, it was a lot of success, so we're already in the stages of planning, planning the future. So. Um, Another good, good friend of mine actually lives here in Rio, right here on Copacabana Beach. So um, came out here for a few days before, before I head back to the, to the U.S. Uh, you, MMA is, is is getting big in Brazil, and how was the experience to to, to teach a seminar here in in, in Brazil? For, it was the, the first time. Yeah, it was uh, my first time here in Brazil for a seminar. Uh, it was good. It was a, uh, a lot of planning too, but. Um, Chris, my, my friend Chris Wilson and his wife Lou did, did most of the planning, so um, you know they 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 did most of the work, I should say. You know, I just I just basically taught the seminar, and, and uh, uh, Chris helped translate it as well. But uh, it went well. Good turnout, like I said. Um, and the, the fan base keeps getting bigger and bigger. And just uh, um, you know, I got I had a lot of good feedback from from just people that came. And, Enjoyed watching what I did, and, and uh, you know, good fans of the sport too. People that are actually fighting. There was, you know, there's a good group of, of fighters mm -hmm. that were actually competing and, and coming up amateur. So uh, they, they, they loved it. They enjoyed it a lot. So it, yeah, it'd be fun to come back and continue to do more. And how about the the talents that you that you see at the seminar? Do you see any anyone that maybe would be a, a bright future in MMA? Yeah, um, I saw a couple. There was one um, one kid who's one of um, one of Chris Wilson's students, kind of a taller guy. Uh, young kid though, he's, he's, he's pretty tough because I, and I sparred with him too and, and did some training, but yeah, there, was a, there was a couple guys that I think have a bright future for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, MMA is getting bigger here and maybe the UFC is bringing another card here in January next year. Yeah. Would you like to be part of that card? I would love to. I would love to come down here and fight. Uh, it'd be a good experience for sure. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't got a chance to to be on a card yet, but um, on the on the opposite side, I would probably have to be fighting a Brazilian. So <laughs> that, or um, you know, maybe they throw me on there to, to be nice. But we'll see. It would be, be great to fight down here now. Uh, did Did you ever had uh, the chance to fight another country? Uh, um, a guy from 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 that country, probably uh, getting all the arena against you. Uh, did you have ever had that? that? I have. Yeah, actually, I. I've, um, I fought once in Korea in, in, against an opposing guy in that country, as well as Japan, um, but not in Brazil. And, and from what I hear, it's a different experience. You know, you fight a Brazilian in, in Brazil is is, is going to be a, a special. Some you're probably not going to forget. But you know, I, I train with a lot of um, Brazilians. Um, I, I train with Rafael Cordero, is my my coach. You know, I think he's the the best the best MMA coach there is. And uh, so I have a lot of. A lot of a lot of my friends are Brazilian, so yeah, I, just, I, I think I kind of understand the culture and the mm -hmm. you know, the respect they have for each other. But probably it, it won't help you to get, to avoid the booze if you fight a Brazilian here, right? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still the the big gringo. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you expect next for you in the UFC? You know, I don't know. Um, the, a lot of uh, interesting fights. Um, John Fitch, Derek Silva just fought. That didn't go as I thought it was going to go. Um, uh, I knew it was going to be a close fight. I thought it was going to be much closer, but you know, Fitch does what he does best and very efficient at what he does. Um, you know, I have no idea who I'm going to fight next. I was hoping probably February next year, maybe uh, February, because uh, so it's nice to kind of get a break, come down, and then you know, kind of relax, get your mind away from competing. Because I, I fought four times in, in a year, or so. It's, which is a lot um, at this level, especially. But uh, yeah, you know, take a little break. This is my vacation here, so <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> Not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back and, and uh, getting back to training and, and just uh, we'll see where it goes from here. I, I have no idea who it's going to be against. There. There's, there's quite a few names that could be, but we'll see. You had an, an, an important win for you. Because you avoided, uh, uh, you you avenged an, uh, an old loss. Yeah. How was how how good was that for you? It, it was good. Um, you know, it was very frustrating with, with the way the, 
my fight in June went. So, you know, really kind of opened my eyes a little bit on fighting a little more smart, a little more intelligently. And uh, so yeah, it was definitely a big win. I think uh, I was really focused on just what I had to do to take out, you know, Jay, Jay and I, we, we know each other really well. Um, I've trained with him before, so I know he, he's a dangerous guy. So I, you know, I kind of had to re look, stop in and kind of look at look at myself and how he's probably going to fight me. So I wanted to take away, you know, anything that I, he, anything I feel in danger of. And so, you know, it wasn't the most exciting fight, but uh, I, you know, I put together a good strategy and stuck to it. So yeah, that's hard to do. I mean, really, I think people don't realize how hard it is to stick to a strategy or, or a game plan. When, uh, you know, usually you have one in the first round, and the first round goes by, and, and get a little reckless, kind of. Mm -hmm. And I've done before, and I've, and I've paid for it. So, yeah, for me, just keep getting better, moving forward, and uh, glad that that fight's over with. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes now. Is that a new style that maybe you're you're, you're going to put in your fights? Fight smarter and getting the win first, and then think about it and giving a great show for the fans, not the way they, the way you went before, and they <laughs> make a uh, you pay for it, right? Like sure, sure. You know, I think. I think anybody to succeed at this level has to fight intelligently and smart. Um, on the opposite side, you know, being being reckless is definitely exciting to watch, but it's not going to give you the best percentages to win. So for me, a little bit of both. That's not my style. I don't like to fight conservatively. I don't like to sit back and, and try to counter guys. Um, it is, you know, I, I can do that, but that, that's not how I fought my whole most of my career. You know, so I'm not going to start doing it now. Um, but yeah, definitely being cognizant of what other guys are good at is an important role. But for me, it's my styles. Uh, you know, really to be, to be aggressive and, and be offensive. So I'm definitely going to stay with that. Last time you came to Rio, you were you, you were coming off a big win against Jake Shield. You were you were expecting to get a title shot, but it never came. You, do you think it was important for you to get a fight against Kepman and realize that you had to to, to change some things in your game, in your strategy, in your in your, in your training? And didn't get that loss in uh, title fights because he would be back to the line and sure. he had to fight a little, well, a lot more. Yeah, you know, I think it, you know, any any time you lose, it's um, it's tough to deal with a loss. Mm -hmm. it, anybody in the sport could, would agree, but uh, it, it definitely shines light on some things which you need to focus on and uh, what I need to work on to improve. You know, there's obviously everyone has holes and things they need to work on. Um, you know, for me, it kind of. You know, coming coming off six wins and then, and then you know getting caught, it's definitely frustrating. But it, it kind of opens your eyes to see what you got to work on and improve. So I mean, it's a very humbling sport. It's a very uh, unforgiving sport. So anybody can, you know, and, and the sport is so unpredictable. I think that's why people love it. You know, anything can happen. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, as a fan, as a competitor, yeah, that that that's draws some sort of attention. Is that anything can happen? I mean, uh, you know, you wouldn't. And anytime you go in there, you know there's a chance of something bad happening. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's the risk we all take. You said that you don't know who's who, who's next for you, but who 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 would like to fight next? Seeing the other fighters in the division, the, the place where you are right now, who do you think it would be the better matchup for you? You know, there's there's a handful of guys. Um, I've been I've been um, I've been s scheduled to fight. Cost check and Fitch both before, mm -hmm. and that hasn't happened. So um, those are two good chance. Good chance I could fight either one of those guys. Um, let's see who else. Uh, I'm not even sure who's, who's winning right now. Uh, like Damian Maya, you know, obviously a very well-known grappler in the sport. Um, so there's a lot of interesting matchups. You know, the Rory McDonald's fight, DJ Penn coming up. So you know, for me, um, you know, for me, just getting get back to the gym and. Getting focused again, so you know I know my potential and stuff. So I gotta do what I gotta do to to stay uh, keep the, the longevity. You know, it's, it's nice to to come out here on vacation and and relax and, and kind of um, you know, just, just kind of look back and, and reflect. You know, reflect mm -hmm. on the last six months, last year. So it's, it's been nice. The name is just said, uh, Damian. It's 2 0 in the Waterweight Vision. Uh, John Fitch just came back to, to the wins against uh, Eric Silva. Koshek is coming off a loss, but he, he's like a, one of the contenders right next there. Uh, 
who who do you believe is the the fight that we put you closer to to a title shot? Is that something you're, you're you're thinking right now? Yeah, definitely. I think you know if you if you're coming from the the matchmaker's point of view, um, Kostrick and Fitch both fought for the title. You know, and I think they're 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 obviously looking for um, someone that would make sense. Uh, you know, Damian Maya is starting to make that argument to be uh, a contender for the title as well. Corey McDonald can be in the future as well. I mean, um, you know, myself too. I, I got to put another couple wins together to, to make that argument. But um, you know, I'm not in a hurry. You know, so, um, there, there's a lot of interesting matchups for myself, but I really got to, got to, you know, just stay, stay focused on training and, and uh, you know, I, don't, I, I can't choose who I fight, so just take it as it comes, you know, and, and uh, be prepared as I can. We are going. We are going to have uh, my next one, uh, uh, GSP against Carlos Condes, uh, unify the the chat, the title. Who do you think is going to leave the arena with the, the championship? Well, um, it's really hard to make an argument against GSP. It really is. He's, um, he's been so dominant for such a long period of time. But you know, we also know he's coming off such a, a long layoff. But uh, it's going to be an interesting fight. I think, you know, Carlos Condes is he's a very good fighter. Um, and I think he's gonna. It's it's hard. I think to like. There, it's hard to be to stay at the top. Like everybody wants to get to the top, but it's, it's it's. I think it's really hard to stay there. So, you know, you got guys. I know because I, I feel the you know I feel the fire when I compete. I feel it every every day. Every time I, I go in there. So, to be that hungry guy, is you know it's definitely more challenging to face those those lions you know when you go in there and Carlos is he's hungry so I think he's gonna make a it's gonna be a great fight I mean I don't think GSP's gonna run him over mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be a quick fight I think mean, I think it's gonna be a long fight and, uh, and a pretty close one but I, I would have to go with GSP um, it's hard to argue against that you know you already fought Condes right what's the, the the strongest about him that could uh, surprise George Carlos, uh, you know, he's he's long, he's got long limbs. Um, yeah, I think he's a, I think he's a smart fighter too, he's, he fights very intelligently. Uh, you know, he's gonna have to stay away from George's strengths, which I, I'm sure he him and, and well Green Jackson knows very well, so um, I don't know, you know, Carlos he keeps getting better, everyone involved, you know, I fought him over three years ago, so he's a completely different guy now and, and as well as I am, but um, he's pretty well-rounded, you know, and I think he just keeps getting better. So he's made that argument that he's you know, one of the best in the world. And uh, there's a lot of people talking about a, a, a super fight between George Sevier and Anderson Silva. How do you see that? Do you, do you, really, do you really believe that this fight is going to happen next? Uh, it might. I, I don't know. As, as a fan, I would like to watch it. I think, uh, you know, I think Anderson Silva's the best. I think he's. What he's done is nobody, I mean, it's unheard of in the sport. I think he's, uh, he's definitely the best. I don't know if that fight will happen. I know, uh, I know they've, they've put that more, they've talked about it more uh, to make it more of a reality, but, you know, both guys are, you know, I, I don't know how long both of them want to fight either. Who knows how long they're going to be, but uh, hopefully it happens. So I hope so. <laughs> Who do you think would win the fight? Um, I think I would have to go with Anderson. I think GSP. I think you could take him down, but that's. I don't know if that's going to really matter. You know, I think when Anderson, you know, when Anderson Silva is he's motivated, he's, he can beat anybody. Yeah, I think it would be a great fight to watch. A fun fight as a fan, it would be fun to watch. <laughs> he can beat anyone, including John Jones. You think? Anderson? Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Uh, that's a different weight class as well. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's so many questions. <laughs> That's a good fight. Uh, geez, I don't know. Could he? Yeah, he could beat anybody for sure. Like, would it surprise me? Mm -hmm. No. But those, I think, would probably be his toughest, you know, strategically mm -hmm. toughest fights. Is guys like John Jones mm -hmm. and GSP. The wrestling, the Charles yeah. Chief, the Charles Sonic showed that the wrestling is the best way to to, to defeat him. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, Saint Pierre and John Jones maybe got as good as in, in, in yeah, the wrestling. Yeah. It is. I would agree. I think you know. I think Chill probably uh, he wrote the blueprint on how to beat him. But uh, you know, to, to be able to to take to take Anderson down and, and uh, to get to a dominant position, you know, and to continuously do that for five rounds. That's you know, it's not a question of can you take Anderson down. It's can you take him down repeatedly? Can you hold him down? Can you get a good position? Can you land significant strikes? You know, so it's, I don't know. Um, those guys, I think, both have the tools to beat him, but I don't think, uh, I wouldn't put money on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you were in uh, GSP shoes, were the, the champion, would you, like, would you accept to, to, to move up and fight Anderson? Um, I, you know what? There's a couple different motives, I think, for that fight. Um, one would be money. So financially, if it made sense, they would both do it, I think. You know, everybody has their, their price. And they, they start to talk about the uh, the pound for pound best fighter. You know, I'm not really sure. Um, those two, you know, I think two of those two are the two of the best in the world right now. But um, they both already, I think, cemented a legacy in the sport. and. Um, you know, who knows? They're both gonna be. You know, you're both. You're, you're both gonna gamble a lot by, by taking that fight. So um, I don't know. I think, I think there's there's definitely you know there's definitely a motive to take it as far as considered to be the best fighter of all time or for financial reasons. So you know, it's, it depends how they look at it. You know, do you believe that there's there's a chance this fight becomes uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao? Many fans waiting, wanting that, waiting for it, and maybe never happens. Yeah, there's a good chance that it will happen. I think there's a better chance of it not happening than there is that it will. You know, but also, you know, I still think that you know Dana could offer him the right, the right amount of money, and they would do it. You know, to sell a super fight like in the Cowboy Stadium, you know, that would be the biggest event probably ever. I think you know, uh, I think that that, that could happen. Thank you, Jake, for this interview. Enjoy the, the rest of your, your trip in Brazil. Ah, uh, thank you. Muito obrigado. Prazer for me. Valeu.